Before we dive into coordinate systems, let's attempt to provide a little motivation. We are used to graphing on the Cartesian plane. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. They intersect each other at a right angle. And that point of intersection is the origin. Now, suppose you have an ellipse on the Cartesian plane. And you want to try to study this ellipse. Well, you have a problem. And that problem is that although we learn an equation for ellipses in the pre calculus, this is the equation of an ellipse. This equation only holds true if the ellipse is in a standard form. An ellipse is in standard form, remember, if it's major axis is parallel to the y axis, or if it's major axis is parallel to the x axis. Here, the major axis of the ellipse is there. It is parallel neither to the x-axis nor to the y-axis. How might we study an ellipse that's not in standard form? Well, there are a few answers to that question. But here's one of them. We could imagine this ellipse as existing in relationship to this point, in relationship to the origin, and not worry about the x and the y axis. I mean, if we erase the x and the y axis, we still have the ellipse that we're interested in studying. And we still have the origin telling us where this ellipse is on the Cartesian plane. Now, through the origin, we could draw a line parallel to the major axis of the ellipse. And then we could draw another line perpendicular to that. And we could take this piece of paper and we could rotate it and we could call this line the x-axis and this line the y-axis and suddenly our ellipse is in standard form. What we've just done is called a change of coordinates or a change of bases.
But how are these graphs related to the bases of vector spaces? That's what we must investigate. And we'll start that investigation in this section.